on principles. Now, when you don't understand the principles, you will suffer for a long time until you find out. Some never find out. So they have a miserable Christian life. <laughs> Somebody said, before I became a Christian, everything was all right. Since I got born again, all hell broke loose. <laughs> the reason hell broke loose was not because, because you became a Christian. It's because now that you've become a Christian, you have refused to study how to control the circumstances of life around you. Hallelujah. Hell has been defeated. You know that, don't you? So if it breaks loose, it can only break loose for more defeat. You see, you cannot be defeated, but you don't know it. Now, if you don't know it, you'll be saying, oh, Jesus Christ. Please help me. It won't change anything. You know, sometimes you call on God and then you call on God and then you call on God and then you get more serious now. You're trying to let him know that, look, you better do something now. And you say, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You're trying to say, Lord, I'm going through a lot of hell. Oh, Jesus. Okay, you get a little more spiritual. Lord Jesus. <laughs> and then it doesn't change. You know why? You know what the problem is? You're trying to put the responsibility on God. And He is not responsible. When you choose to discover this reality, you'll be amazed how quickly your life will change. You'll be amazed how quickly. A woman one time was in a certain church. She had been in that church for 25 years. Then she began to suffer from arthritis. She couldn't believe it. She said, why? I have served Jesus Christ in this church for 25 years. Why did Jesus allow arthritis to attack me? She said it was Jesus who allowed the arthritis to attack her. And she, she wasn't happy with God. She said, why after 25 years of service, why would God let this trouble come to my body? Now, let me throw it over to you. Who was responsible? She thought because she was serving God, God had the responsibility to stop arthritis from attacking her. If I, if I take care of God's business, God ought to take care of my business. He ought to stop arthritis from coming to my body. I'm serving God. God ought to help me out. I didn't know arthritis was coming, but God knew. Why didn't he stop it? That's human thinking. That's not God's thinking. Now listen, and listen hard. Listen, and listen, listen, listen hard. Listen, and listen hard. Are you hearing me? Yes. See, without understanding this, you are ready to suffer for a very long time. But when you understand this, you are ready to enjoy your life for a very long time. Are you hearing me? See, this is the fact. This is the reality. See, this is the reality. You are, not, you are not blessed because you're good and kind. God is, hey, listen, God is not going to bless you more. Listen, hello. Hi. How many of you know Jesus already died for every one of us? Did he? He already died for every one of us. And he has made us. His heirs, joint heirs with Christ already. All right. Now, do you, do you know that God has done everything that he needed to do about our salvation? You know that. Now, the Bible tells us Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is not working. He is sitting. That means he's done his job. He's through. Now, He's brought every one of us legally 
Legally, he's brought every one of us into his kingdom. Legally, into his presence. He doesn't need to bless you more than he already has. Now, because of our use of language, a lot of us don't seem to understand that we have to speak in human terms so that people can understand us. I told you the other day, when you start talking spiritual language at a high class, people can't understand you anymore. See? Because there are different levels. So we say, oh, God's going to bless me. Then we say, God bless you. It's a greeting and it's a blessing. All right, what blessing comes with it? Do you know what blessing comes with it? You haven't studied that far. Something comes with it, but what is it? All right. Now that you're a child of God, you cannot not be blessed. Now, I want to show you this. You cannot not be blessed. And now that you're a child of God, there's nothing too good for you. Now that you're a child of God, there is no reason why God should want to bless you any further. Why? Because everything he owns is yours. <laughs> now, watch this, watch this. You say, so why am I not enjoying everything? That's the right question. That's why you're here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you not enjoying everything then? God doesn't need to bless A more than B. Because the, he's got everything. He's got, God's got everything. You cannot, you cannot spend God's blessings. You can't exhaustively enjoy all of God's blessings. How are you going to do it? It's too much. How much can you use before God gets broke? <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Come on, how much, how much of God can you enjoy until he gets broke and starts complaining? Somebody said, I didn't want to bother God because I felt he already had a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so why should I bother God with my problems? Look at you. Look at you, you hypocrite. You know why you're talking like that. You just are too lazy to pray. <laughs> That's the truth. If there is a God in heaven, how could we, how could we, how could we bother him with more problems? No, I didn't want to bother God with my problems. So, who did you want to bother? Your husband, isn't it? Come on, talk to me. You didn't want to talk to God about your problems because he's got too much to deal with. And you thought about talking to a human being about your problems. You didn't want to tell God. He's too busy. But you had a human person in mind to talk to. Aren't you a hypocrite? Come on. The truth is, you, you're, not, you're not, not willing to talk to God. You just don't know how. Or you're unwilling to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 